and hello, and welcome everyone to the comic multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. As always, I am your host, Joel, and joining me as always is my partner in comic book crime. It's Matt, everybody. Hello, everyone. How are you going, Joel? Part oh, you know, can't complain, hanging in there as best I can. Uh, <laughs> I, I swear, as you know, as I just sit in friggin' quarantine waiting for uh, a vaccine to come my way. Uh, some good news, I think, uh, what is it, Ontario, or at least my part of Ontario, was going to try and open back up again on June 2nd, which is ironic because it's like just in time for like the big long weekend here. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, who decided that? That felt arbitrary. <laughs> But, you know, uh, set up my air conditioner for the summer. It's getting much warmer here in Canada now, and I was lucky to get one. It's getting warmer for you. It's getting colder for me. Yeah, I know how crazy is that. I, I, I would be happy to trade. I'm not ready for it to be <laughs> hot and nice outside and me not be able to go outside. <laughs> Though, if anything, it's probably safer now because all the old-ass people in my building all got vaccinated, which means that they're going to open up the pool again at my building this summer, which means that, yeah, I'd probably be, be the only person who had to mask up because all the old people are vaxxed and ready to party. <laughs> nice, nice. I know my parents are getting their first vaccination shot, I think, to today, actually. Nice, nice. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's It's been very slow rollout here in, Same in here, Australia. Same yeah. yeah. Yeah, I th Canada and Australia, same same uh, general consensus I'm feeling. And let me guess, are all the different levels of your government blaming each other about why yeah. there's not enough vaccine and why people can't get it? Pretty, pretty much, yeah. It's so stupid because, again, and I know I've said it before on other shows, if I lived in the city, if I lived in a hot spot, I probably could have gotten at least my first one by now. Mm -hmm. But they're just like, nah, you're in the country, you're spread out, it's not a hot zone, you can wait. I thought I'd have to wait till august but uh they moved up the timetable now i can maybe get at least get on a waiting list in july so you know okay maybe for my cool. birthday that'll be my little birthday present to myself <laughs> it comes in like a little box and oh <laughs> that would be that ain't happening that'd be very nice actually <laughs> if only i freaking wish that would happen god damn so uh, how's your week been uh, not too, not too bad, not too bad. I got, I got a number of comic reviews done. Uh, it's still not enough, but uh, big I got a, week this week. Stupid big. Got a n number of them done. Um, did I watch anything? I don't think. I think this was the week where I kind of like just didn't really watch much. Oh, I watched the new Taylor Sheridan film. Uh, oh, to yeah. those who wish me dead. Yeah, the one with Angelina Jolie and yeah. the fire. And everything. I didn't even know that was one of his movies. And then I'm like, okay, that's one of his. Maybe I should watch it then. It's pretty good. It's based on a novel by someone. Um, uh, and he wrote the script. So it's not script. an original Terror of Sheridan. No, no, no. But it's it's still got all those things that make his films quite good. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he has a way about his stuff. I, I, have, I watched the first episode of Yellowstone and I need to go back because you gave it such a good review. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, I uh, spent this week, I actually uh, got about half, five episodes deep into uh, Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah, and what do you think? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I know we talked about it last week, and I always feel a bit like a chump or a poser when I go into something and haven't read the comic. But for once, I must say, not knowing where the story is going is actually making me more interested to see where it's going to go. It's really cool. I really like the... Um... Uh, the flashback stuff with them going to yeah. the island and stuff like that stuff I really enjoyed. It is. It's it's well balanced, I would say. And again, I don't know if the book is like that, if you're constantly going back and forth, but I kind of like this like two tiered story thing where it's like, hey, in this episode, we're going to follow the son of George Hutchinson. And in mm -hmm. the flashback, here's a flashback, you know, on his father. And, you know, thematically, they all kind of connect. I'm like, oh, this is like the good episodes of Lost. Yep. Yep. That's very much what it reminds me of. And it's like, oh, here's all the questions and here's some of the answers. Uh, Dumel, yeah, he's really good as the Utopian. They're kind of Superman pastiche. Yeah. Oh, he, he totally is just he's just Superman. <laughs> he, he nails it. And, you know, it's funny for like a Miller work. And again, didn't read the comic, so I don't know what it's like. But I do kind of like this like sympathy for all the people who have to live in, under Superman's household. And it's like, imagine how much pressure that would put you under. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, as I said last week when I was talking about it, it's basically like a Superman family show by Mark Millar. So it's got yeah. that kind of like edge to it, I guess. 
Yeah, very much so. It's funny, too, you know, I'm watching that show while I'm also running Capes and Crooks, the brand new supervillain Suicide Squad RPG pastiche on the channel. Check that out, everyone, if you haven't already. And I felt like, you know, like such a hack when I was writing it, being like, okay, so I need my Superman stand-in, and I need stand-in names for this, that, and the other. And like, oh, is that too hacky? Is that too punny? Then I watch Jupiter's Legacy, and I'm like, oh, it's fine, actually, to do this, because if you're Mark Miller, you can make a goddamn career off the back of it. Yeah, we'll call a guy Brainwave, and and, and Black Star, and... Tectonic. Utopian. Ghost Beam. <laughs> I liked Ghost Beam as, like, a Green Lantern stand, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty fun. Sky Fox. Sky Fox yeah. is also pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty good name. As far as name goes, I'm like, ooh, is a Batman stand? Because what's a bat if not a flying rat and, you know, a fox very much in the same <laughs> vein as that? I'm like, oh, Fits that's Fits in fun. with his character arc as well. <laughs> also very much. I like that. I like it a lot. Uh, pff, what else did I do this week? Uh, ooh, Bad Batch. Watch the new Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. It was very good. Very good. It was. Very dark. Very Absolutely, yeah, this is probably one of the darkest Star Wars uh, episodes they've done in that in a long time, because my thought, and I'm sure you had the same, is like, oh, we're getting away from the war and the horrors of it now. It's like, no, we're actually seeing the rise of a totalitarian government now. I like that. I just like how much they're going into detail with the uh, the transition from yeah. clones to uh, conscripted soldiers. Yeah, because that's something, like, up until now, we've only ever, like, you know, had in passing, and we only ever had to, like, you know, what is it, fan canon it? Now we're actually seeing it. Mm -hmm. And the Kaminoans, how they're, like, really more characters now in this than they ever have before, as they're desperately trying to, you know, like, keep themselves relevant in this uh, imperial world now. Yeah, yeah, and I I think they're, they're building up towards, like, a, a Kaminoan uh, revolution or something yeah sure seems that way because again obviously you know what's stopping them from making a clone army for like the rebels you know was that ever a topic breached i'm sure it was and we never hear about the Kaminoans uh referenced ever again that would actually be a really great story because i i imagine the rebels both would want it but wouldn't want it just because of the ethics behind it absolutely what uh what do we think omega's deal is because obviously the name is interesting you know alpha and omega omega the end the end of the clones the final well, clone well we know she is a similar to the bad batch where she's a uh defective quote-unquote clone mm. and we know she can shoot which she didn't even know yeah and she's got some type of i think i mentioned this last week or the week before some type of em empathy mm. like focus or something like she can feel the empathy and things like she did in this episode with the um that uh creature that energy lizard right right so maybe there's some type of maybe this is like the the origin of like that the whole force thing with like palpatine and uh grogu mm. and gideon and everything with him trying to find like clone uh force user cells or something Maybe we know, uh, what is it? We know, uh, Ming Ne Wah's assassin character is mm -hmm. going to be in this show because we've seen her in the trailers. Yep. What do you think of the over under that we're going to see Boba Fett in here? Because I know there's an episode, a really important episode about his development, uh, in the Adamantic or the, uh, Anim the animatic. Animatics, yeah. yeah. Animatics, thank you. That's a fucking tongue twister. Uh, with like the ultimate fate of Cad Bane and everything that they never got to make for the last season of Clone Wars. I think they could very easily adapt that episode here and now. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think we're going to get some, maybe not that shot for shot, but like something similar to that. But just because I th I'm sure in the Mandalorian, Fett uh, mentioned that he knew Fennec before mm, like meeting yeah. her and saving her life. So yeah, it's possible we'll see him. Yeah, I think uh, that would be super cool. So yeah, that's the kind of week uh, we had by the sounds of it. <laughs> Still yeah. plugging away oh, at oh, Destiny. Oh, yeah, no, I also, um, yeah, speaking of video games, I also got Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Oh, yeah, how's that? That looks good. It's pretty good. It's, it's you know, pretty much the same, but just a, a, mm. a little bit shinier coat of paint on it. But, no, it's, I haven't played those games in a long time, so same. to have them all together with all of the DLC, except for Pinnacle Station on the first one, because apparently they lost the source code for that. Oh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that happens, but... 
That's crazy. Yeah, I, I definitely want to take that ride again because it's like, yeah, I really love all these characters. I love Morden and uh, Garrus and everyone else. Yeah, yeah, I just finished. I'm on to the second one now. I just finished mm. the first one. But yeah, playing through the first one and then going into the second one, it's like so different. I know, because it was a completely different game. I I never played the first one, because it was never on any console or machine I could run it at the time, so I'm actually very interested to play one for the first time. It's very different compared to the other two. It's, it's very it's like Knights of the um, Republic. Yeah, it's more slower as well. Very. Yeah. yeah. But it's worth it. It's really, slower. really great. Especially because, you know, I want to see the evolving storylines, because I only jumped in at two, and I know there's like so many storylines you might not have been able to see if you weren't playing from the mm-hmm. first one. Mm-hmm. All the all them little things. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that was basically the kind of week I had. Oh, hey, so since everyone is here, I know I alluded to it on Twitter, so I should probably talk about it now. Uh, the fate of this, the show you're watching right now in YouTube. Again, as we talked about at great length last week, YouTube, in their infinite wisdom, has changed the goddamn algorithms once again, which means that longer content on my channel is kind of getting fucked over. And uh, it's not just me, it's YouTubers across the board. You may have realized that they've had to change uh, what they're going to do. And I uh, thought it over. I talked about it with some of our other YouTube friends there. And I think I know what I'm going to do now for the comic multiverse. Yeah. So what we're going to do, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to keep streaming every Sunday at this time that we normally do. So if you're part of the crowd here, and I know we have many, many regulars, Jaden, Space Lord, Tevia, etc., etc., Lich Lord, Chris, who come out and watch it, you're going to be able to see us at our regular time that we do it, because we're going to keep this one going. If you are a Patreon uh, subscriber, which you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, a uh, dollar a month gets you the audio version of the show as soon as, pop- uh, as soon as possible. Five dollars and up gets you the video version of the show, which we will still be recording, and you can watch there. Uh, the show will continue to come out in audio form sometime after that. Again, I still haven't quite figured out all of that yet, but the video version of the show on YouTube will be going every other week. Is mm-hmm. what it's going to be. So this episode we're recording right now will not actually be making it to YouTube, although maybe it fucking should because I'm giving this very important talk right now, aren't Do, I? Fuck. Yeah, put this one up on YouTube and then the next one won't go until the next week. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't think about that. Okay, so this one will be going, <laughs> but the next one will not be. <laughs> So basically, if you want to follow the show, either watch it live, become a patron, or wait however long until it comes out on the audio channels. And hey, if you are a listener to the audio channel, uh, uh, specifically be it SoundCloud or iTunes, give us a review, why don't you? It's been a long time. You know, give us a nice five star, say your following order, saying you want to help the show, because that does help us up in the rankings. It does help us out, and maybe, uh, just maybe the comic multiverse will attract better sponsors, and maybe we'll move up in the audio which I don't think we have in a very long time. So that'd be nice. Yeah. So there you go. If uh, you start missing episodes and be like, oh, did I miss an episode of this uh, on the channel? No, you didn't. It's, it's streamed only on Twitch. Uh, I, only we on can Twitch. do dual streams. The problem with that is you need to get uh, Streamlabs Prime or something, and it's some ridiculous yeah. Prime. I don't know why they put it behind a wall. It's just yeah, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite expensive to do that. But I I would like love to do that. I just can't afford it right now. Likewise. Also, thank you, Super Cena, for following. I could see you. <laughs> You will kick out it, too. So that's just your little housekeeping update on that. And again, it may not be forever. It's just going to be, you know, until YouTube uh, hopefully gets their shit together whenever that is. Yeah, well, and hopefully it doesn't do the thing where we get into this uh, routine of doing this and then they and change then it, it again. Changes it back. changes it back or something. <laughs> which is which is always the way. Because, yeah, I'm seeing, like, videos that should do way better not doing good at all. Yep. Like, again, jo- Joker, which is doing great. Uh, again, was out for tw- uh, 24 hours, and it's, you know, barely cracked, uh, what is it, 1,500 yet, which, you know, yeah. usually it should do so much better. Heroes Reborn, shockingly doing okay, though. Yeah. Oh, I knew that was going to do okay. <laughs> so thanks, Heroes Reborn, for that. Actually, ironically, the podcast from last week after we took a week off actually did better than it had in a while, so that's also good. <laughs> So again, maybe like going every other week with the video isn't the worst idea because it also frees up a slot on the channel where I can do other stuff. Yeah. So there's an idea. (laughs) 
uh, someone saying there, hey, have you thought about, you know, maybe uh, cutting it into a shorter video, basically just the news segments and making that a thing? I mean, that's an option, but that's also more work on top of it. And again, I feel like I could put a comic review there, and the comic reviews usually do better, because we're not really a news channel. I feel for the shorter shit, people go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Is what I feel. I mean, it's maybe something I could experiment at some point with, maybe... Yeah, you, I guess you could like maybe cut you could cut up the show into segments, and you just upload all the segments. Maybe, yeah, that might be an option. We'll see about that. Because I mean, I figure you know sometimes our new segment can go for about three minutes. <laughs> Where again, where all my other videos are like three to ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> are the most that they are, which I only do that because that used to be the golden number on YouTube is that, you know, shorter content, yep. uh, what is it, got, you know, better retention in general because it's all about retention because it used to be about views. Then it used to all be about subscribers. YouTube keeps moving the friggin' goalposts. I don't know what anything is anymore. And then for a while, longer content was better, but then it's not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, it feels like they, they see the numbers. It's like, wait a minute. All these channels are starting to get, like, better than, like, our our like top our golden mm. channel so we can't have that we'll you know add some other caveat that they have to get through that our yeah. our channels can easily get through then it's about more ads then it's about retention then it's about i don't, yeah, I don't yeah, freaking know it is and, and yeah all this sort of stuff yeah we've been at this for this long and i still have no idea what the hell i'm doing so again thank you everyone who stuck around <laughs> for all of this for all this time we are madly appreciative and again if you're a patron you're not going to be left out in the cold you're going to be getting a little bit of everything because you know the donation money that you get is more important now than ever likewise all the people who are treating themselves to our sponsor wild bill craft soda use the promo code <laughs> cape joel all one word for 10 percent off your next purchase uh in north america because, again, that's also good, and we're also making money off that, which is nice. So that also helps me pay Matt and keep the lights on. Yeah. I also have a PayPal link down there, too, if you just want to give just straight-up donations. That's also an option. Nice. Is is it donation or is it charitable gift? I talked about this with my tax guy when I last did. No, 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 donations up to a certain thing. We do have to dock you some, but if it's just a gift, be sure to say it's just a gift. <laughs> Gifts are fine. <laughs> Look, we just have very, very many nice people out there, Matt, who want to give us lots of nice gifts. Yeah, so many gifts. It's not even so, our birthdays. So many lovely gifts just for being good boys, good internet boys. <laughs> in fact, be sure to put that in the log line of anything you give me, good internet boy, just to really fuck with my tax person next year. <laughs> uh, you, but yes, we are both on Patreon. Uh, not as a group. But I'm, I'm, I'm on. not on Patreon, no. Okay, and again, so anything you pay me, I used to pay Matt anyway. If you're, I, I, so I, I keep can. thinking about making a Patreon, but I can't warrant like like what I would put up that I don't already give people on my YouTube channel. So. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Super Cena. What happened to the little funny clips I used to put in my videos? Yeah, that was like two months I did that, and that was a lot of fun. But again, also a lot of work, and it got to a point when I started, like, recycling clips that I had used before, because my mind goes to the same jokes over and over again. <laughs> I should probably bring it back. It was a little, uh, what is it, divisive. Some people really liked it, some people didn't. Which is also just me ripping off girlfriend reviews, because that's basically <laughs> what they do in their videos, and it's very funny. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I want to put Trailer Park Boys clips in my videos. <laughs> And also, I never got dinged for it, is the other thing. I was afraid, like, hey, am I going to get dinged for copyright for this? But I never did, because they were always, like, three seconds. Yeah, I, I, as long as you keep them low, I think you, you're yeah. pretty good. But, uh, I, I mean, shit, it's nice to know some person really liked them and thought they were funny. Or two people, <laughs> at least, thought they were really funny. Maybe I'll have to get back to that. I didn't get rid of them. I still have, like, my file of, like, funny reaction clips. <laughs> uh all right, so I guess with that, we can hop into the news this week, Matt. There wasn't a ton, but uh, I tried to collect as many stories as I could. Yeah, it's all Marvel-related. Well, oh, yeah, well, holy shit, you're not, uh, you're not kidding. So uh, our first story this week uh, relates to Kang the Conqueror. You know him, big time traveling, baddie, going to be the villain for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Yep. So, yeah, he's actually going to be getting a whole origin miniseries 
from Jackson Lanzig, and I guess the idea being that uh, he's never had his own solo series before, which is surprising because I would have bet money that he did. Yeah, I, I was sure he had one. Yeah, me too. I really, really thought there was going to be something there, but I guess not. Same with there has never been a concrete, like, you know, written down version of his origin, which is a bit of a mess because he was a pharaoh and he might also be like a Mm -hmm. long, long relationship to uh, Reed Richards. Yep. Yeah. There's like an Iron Man relation in there as well. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. that's also in there, too. And all the times he's crossed his own timeline and everything. Well, I guess they're trying to get all that shit in order because there's going to be going to be a movie soon yeah <laughs> that's so funny that like marvel's like now we don't have to put all this in order oh god there's gonna be a movie shit i guess we gotta put this in order P- people are gonna look up this character and get confused oh no <laughs> yeah oh no we better try and fix this one lickety split i mean there's certainly enough there that i think they could hammer out into a pretty interesting story oh yeah absolutely absolutely and lanzig is a good writer in his own right so i'll actually be interested to see what they got going on here yeah, so it's certainly a mini series. It's coming out a little later on this year, I think. Yeah, did I have the date down when I wrote the story? I want to say it's have... like like August or something. Again, yeah, a September. lot of what we're reading right now is for the summer. Yeah, which I cannot believe it is summertime already. On mm-hmm. uh, hello to you too, Danny Blackston. Much appreciated. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, where where do we think we're going to go with this, you know, because obviously there's so many holes you can fall into in a story about time travel and characters who cross their own timeline. Yeah, uh, hmm. I I think it's going to be complete, completely new origin, devoid of like all the all the his past stuff. So I think they're probably going to get rid of the Reed Richards uh, connections just just because like I can imagine someone read too much into that and think like, oh, Mm. this is the start of fantastic four in the mcu and that you you know what i mean yeah i mean they could they could keep them in and keep it in a little bit but i think they're going to get rid of that mostly and just set it as sort of something standalone Mm. it's just some guy traveling through through time you might you might be on to something there all right now what else do we got going on here Ooh, uh hey cable everyone uh he used to have a book he doesn't have a book anymore i'm pretty sure right yes i think it finished up okay so yeah he had a book and he was young but guess what old cable which is actually the original cable i know it gets confusing right (laughs) is coming back for cable reloaded uh as part of al ewing's the last annihilation storyline which i'm guessing is part of what he's doing in guardians of the galaxy and everything right now kind of sort of i'm i'm started reading his guardians book and um, I I am fairly certain it's building towards something like that. Uh, I guess now we know. First, and I love everyone says pe- uh, better cable is older cable. I'm like, I don't know. I never thought cable was that interesting no. to begin with. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Again, I whether he's young or whether he's old, he's just, oh, yeah, he's that guy. He's that guy who's Cyclops and Jean Grey's son, but time travel and techno-organic virus and everything else. <laughs> You know what my favorite version of Cable is? The one from Deadpool 2 where they don't bother explaining anything. Yeah, he just shows up and looks like Josh Brolin. He just shows up fully formed and that's all you need. Look at my cool eye, look at my cool arm and my big gun. <laughs> and it's, the chat is saying yes, he also apparently stole Cloud's Buster Sword along the way. <laughs> I mean, I know Young Cable had that Space Knight sword, but it didn't look like that, did it? It wasn't that big. Uh, I can't actually remember. I don't think so. I don't think it was that big. I'm fairly that the big. design does look familiar though. I mean, you know, classic cable is just like, look, it's gotta be as big as my gun. I gotta make it even bigger. <laughs> That's just his uh his dagger. <laughs> yeah, really, this is my dagger if you wanna <laughs> see my sword. It's <laughs> what I call my dick. <laughs> it's way bigger than this. <laughs> Chat saying, yes, it is the same sword. Is this just like a weird art thing or was it like always that big? Could be a weird art. I know it was, it was, it was a decent size when he was kid cable. Uh, though I think people really uh, mis- underestimate how uh, big kid cable was. He wasn't like a literal child. True. <laughs> Maybe, maybe it's a perspective thing, like the hobbits and Isengard there. He's just, like, holding it closer to the camera. Ooh, look how big it is. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah, as the chat says, his giant space sword shrinks when it gets cold out. You're right. Don't judge me by the size of my space sword. It's judge very me by cold the size here. of my huge gun. 
absolutely. I'm compensating for nothing. <laughs> also, Al Ewing is writing this, and this is his thing, so, like, what the fuck does Al Ewing have to say about Cable, I wonder? It might be the greatest Cable one-shot ever. <laughs> And again, I think it's just a one-shot. They don't say he's coming back for a bigger solo series. They just say he's coming back as part of The Last Annihilation. Yeah, it'll probably just be for the event. Yeah. Hey, I'm back now. I'm old. Don't ask any questions. I just am. <laughs> but you know what? That's not the only thing that's going to be new at Marvel this summer because uh, Extreme Carnage, that's going to be that big new book by uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson that's spinning out of the end of Venom, which is going to be over very soon. Uh, I think it ends basically with the next issue, and uh, a bunch of the different symbiotes are going to be getting little special one-shots. One such said symbiote is Lasher, obviously everyone's favorite, clearly the pretty boy of the group, Lasher, <laughs> right? No no doubt about that. Uh, he's heard, getting he a heard book. the fans, and the fans wanted Lasher. <laughs> a bunch of horny monster fuckers all want to fuck Lasher. <laughs> oh shit, I guess we didn't write that down, but there was a Venom trailer this week too, wasn't there? Yeah, it looks like more of the same shit. The, though this time... The best comic though, book movie of 2003. Though this time they actually look to be leaning into it, and they're like, fuck it, it's just a comedy now. Yeah, yeah. Which is, we've been saying forever, that's the only way you can save it. I don't think it makes it look any less tedious, but I appreciate that they are not even kind of trying to make it serious now. Yeah, I I, I, keep, and I also keep forgetting that Andy Serkis is directing it. Oh yeah, that's right, he is. Gollum's directing oh. it. <laughs> Good for him, I guess, he deserves it. <laughs> I hope it does well for him. And also, it's Lord and Miller, so I'm sure it'll be greatly self-referential. Oh, hopefully. You know, maybe they'll let uh, Woody Harrelson ham it up like they let Hardy ham it up and continue to let <laughs> him ham it up. I was really this. hoping, I know they weren't going to do it, but I was really hoping he'd keep that little orphan Annie wig that he had in the, oh, the, the, yeah. the post credit scene of the first one. Because it looked awful, and I think it, it would have really just been did. great just to have him play this super serious villain with this fucking mop on his head. <laughs> The, the joke is is that it is a wig and he just takes it off at the end. This he, is a he thing scalped some woman or something for it. That uh, oh, could have yeah. been really great. It kind of fucked up. <laughs> Very fucked up, the origin of it, yeah. And again, they sent the whole trailer to one is the loneliest number because, haha, it's of funny because they're two. The whole point of being a symbiote is that you're two and not one. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but uh, sp speaking of symbiotes, which is the whole reason we started this with uh, Extreme Carnage, Lasher, uh, 3.5 over 6 days because that title just keeps getting fucking longer and longer uh, the whole point of this Lasher book is that apparently they're going to be debuting a brand new symbiote in the pages of Lasher I guess Lasher is Preggers is Impreg you could say and is going to be having a, a, a little symbiote baby okay <laughs> Now, what, what what the hell is the next one going to be in the naming convention? Because we got Venom, we got Carnage, we got Poison, and Toxin, and uh, Lasher, and Riot, and Phage, and Scream. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the next name going to be in the naming convention? Hmm. What's another really <laughs> hardcore Mauler. Ma Mauler's a good one. How has that not Ma been done? Oh, what was the space one, too? There was a space one, too, that was on the cat. Who was... Sleeper. 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 Prancer. Yeah, Prancer. <laughs> Vincent. And Common and Cupid. And <laughs> Terminal. That Terminal's not bad, actually. <laughs> That's actually not bad at all. And who are you? I'm Terminal. Bob. <laughs> Death. <laughs> no, Space Knight is already a thing, Tevia. <laughs> Can't be called Space Death. If he was called Space Knight, that'd be fucking funny. Dire. Ooh, there's a guy. I'm dire. <sighs> it's gotta be yeah, but it's gotta be spelt with like like two R's. D no D Y R E. Mm. Oh, like Pyre, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cancer is also not bad. Mayhem is also pretty good, keeping it very nineties, because yeah, they don't have a cancer yet. Some of them think Marvel will call a comic book cancer. <laughs> a villain called well if it was the 90s yeah probably not now <laughs> destroyer Pfft. well like like the kiss album alive and destroy these are these are all excellent names people and again if any of these end up being the one then marvel owes us all a go <laughs> yeah, i like that one we'll just call it donald glover <laughs> donald glover the symbiote <laughs> hello i'm donald glover the symbiote <laughs> You know, I still haven't watched Atlanta. I should. Everyone says Atlanta is just, like, genius. I've heard it's good, yeah. 
I think I think we all have that one show where it's like, yeah, they say that's really good. I should watch it, and then none of us do. <laughs> now, what's what's the new symbiote gimmick? What's a, in our new symbiote we're creating here? What can it do that's different than any of the other ones? Uh, hmm. Keep in mind that none of the other Life Foundation symbiotes do anything different. Yeah, yeah. So why would this be any different? <laughs> <laughs> Cancer's not bad, Kid Joel 2021. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be on my dust jacket. Cancer's not bad. <laughs> that can be one of the clips we upload. I'll just like keep yep. you saying that cancer is like Joel's <laughs> Joel's controversial views on cancer. On cancer, it's not bad. That becomes my most viewed video. Cancer's <laughs> not bad. Everyone just showing it out of context. Wow, of all the things I thought I'd get canceled for, I never thought it was this. <laughs> but I didn't say it. I didn't actually say it. <laughs> mold. Yeah, mold. There's a good one. I mold the symbiote. <laughs> I make food go bad. That's my thing. That's the hard part about keeping symbiotes interesting because, like, none of them do anything new. The last new one was, like, the Grendel symbiote as part of, like, the hive mind and everything. And even then, it didn't really do anything new. It was still all the same shit. You make blades with your arms. You know, you can friggin' transform sometimes. That's about it. Yep. Again, I don't know how you keep symbiotes interesting. New color. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That's what colors really, have That's we really done it. <laughs> They're just all slightly different colors. You're absolutely right. We got yellow and white and black and red. This one will be orange or chartreuse. <laughs> periwinkle just, blue. Oh, periwinkle. Yeah, I like that. I'm periwinkle, the symbiote. <laughs> Fear me. Fear me. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, purple, it's the print symbiote. It has just a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> it's purple rain. It, like, literally falls from the sky as, like, bits of rain. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, everyone, get ready for the brand new, brand new symbiote coming soon. <laughs> Brandon Williams just says racial. What is, is that his power or is his <laughs> name? Is his name racial or is his powers racial? Oh, no. He's, the, he's a toxic YouTuber. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! He gets onto a YouTube. That's all he does with his powers. He just makes YouTube videos to hold up his ring light and his camera and his <laughs> microphone and everything. <laughs> Shit! Can I have a symbiote now? I'd really like one of those, actually. <laughs> Man, racial. That's a terrifying symbiote. You have a bunch of heroes being like, "I do. I don't know what to do in this situation. This this villain is such a minefield." <laughs> What do I do? What do I do? And quickly moving on from this one <laughs> to our next story, and uh, actually our last story, too. Uh, Ed Bresson, Canadian writer, uh, is apparently going to be penning the bland, uh, the bland, the brand new Clown Hunter secret file uh, one shot for DC, which, uh, yeah, they're uh, already giving this character a big old push. Yeah, we, well, we kind of had a break from him for a little bit so we could introduce stuff like Miracle Molly and do all yeah, the yeah. stuff they're doing with Punchline at the moment. But yeah, he's, he's finally come back because we haven't seen him for a while. We have not, actually. It's funny. Someone uh, in my comment section said, hey, when are we going to get more Clown Hunter? And I was happy to tell them, well, hey, man, guess what? <laughs> Getting a whole issue with this character. Uh, apparently he gets attacked by Punchline and some clowns, uh, while at the Gotham Academy, which I read it wrong at first. I thought it said Titans Academy. I'm like, oh shit, are they sending him to Titans Academy? <laughs> too much shit's going down there with the Suicide Squad and yeah, all that sort too of much stuff. Shit. <laughs> if he should, and not having a main character, that's yeah. a bit of an issue. Man, Titans Academy actually becomes a stealth clown hunter book and it's all about him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually like him as like the anti-authority uh what is it sidekick the one who's like now nah, i want to hit people with my baseball bat yeah <laughs> is all i want to do i'm like that's fine you can have an anti-heroic young sidekick hero in fact that's something fairly new that we don't have it is yeah even at marvel all like the champions affiliated heroes are like good and above good. board none of mm -hmm. them are like you know uh like this guy none of them are like uh transgressive or edgy yeah mini punisher Little mini Punisher, again, there's something kind of interesting about that, which is basically just Hit Girl, but that's fine. <laughs> also, I hate clowns, too, so I find him relatable. <laughs> He's doing the world a service. <laughs> doing the world a service. Hey, uh, he wasn't in that uh, Celebration of Asian uh, Heroes issue from this week, was he, even though he should have been? He was not, no. 
that's weird because his uh, name is a uh, Bo Fan, right? So he's like yeah. he's he was he's Korean or Vietnamese? Uh, Vietnamese, I do believe. Yeah, huh? Missed opportunity. He should have been in that. I didn't get a chance to read that one for the channel, but I did like you know bre- I did buy it because I wanted to support it, and mm-hmm. I breezed through it to like see all the characters that were in it. I was surprised for a second and slightly taken aback because Damien was in it. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, Damien's biracial, isn't he? That never comes up in stories, but he is. Never comes up, no. His granddad, because he is just the personification of spoiled rich kid white privilege, isn't he? He's so white in his behavior, it completely wipes away (laughs) his biracial nature. Because it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Rachel Ghoul is his granddad. The League of Assassins is, like, you know, based in Asia and that part of the world and everything. Mm-hmm. It's literally an evil ninja clan sometimes. Yeah, I guess he's not totally white, is he? No. Also, Leanne Harper shows up in that book, too, but some people are unsure of the continuity of it. Well, I Again, those stories, in whenever a big anthology book like that happens, I see it more as just a celebration of those characters mm-hmm. and not something you have to be like, well, is it continuity or is it not, you know? Yeah. Uh, likewise connor hawk is in it but he's in his old costume not in the new one that he's again that's another now. thing because currently connor hawk is like an evil killer yeah so yeah, like and, and in this one guy. he's teaming up with the new superman and sharing dinner and everything with him so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah still i like it exists uh boy uh gene lu and yang super hyphen man got a bunch of stuff in that book too by the looks of it he got a whole story too and i'm like oh yeah that's right we invented like a whole asian like you know uh what is it side of the dc universe in china and everything that we never got anything more yeah, out of it and it's a fucking shame because it was all great and yeah gene lu and yang's like hey i got more stories in this if you want me to tell it i can yeah, no we just get more monkey prince who is mm. shazam or something is it is well no he like comes out of shazam (laughs) yeah shazam is in that story with him again because that was the big like you know debut one in the back again i'm gonna read it but yeah shazam was in that story yeah which actually hey you know gene lu and yang he's writing uh batman superman now so if there was ever a reason to bring back his asian batman and superman that would be a good way to do it exactly exactly it's perfect you've teed him up (laughs) again if that doesn't happen i'll be slightly disappointed (laughs) Uh, so yeah, there's all the news for this week, everyone. There was not a lot going on. No, there wasn't. Not a lot going on, but uh, we hope you enjoyed what you got there. And from there, we kind of hop on over to what we read this week. And there is a shit ton of books that came out this week. Matt and I tried to read as many as we could. We couldn't read all of them, but we did our best. I read quite a few of them. I've still got like yeah. probably about two from this week that I need to really put out, which will be put out yeah. probably later tonight. But yeah. I uh, I was reviewing ones like right up until right up until showtime. Yeah. So uh, where would we like to begin this week, Matt? Um. Well, well, we'll begin where I don't think a lot of people will assume we'll begin, but I'm going to begin in this place, but mainly because I'm a huge Superman fan. And this mm-hmm. week we've got at least five or six Superman books, and the first one was Heroes Reborn week. issue two. <laughs> yeah yeah this was a superman book wasn't it it sure was <laughs> all of the heroes reborn books this week were <laughs> yeah which man you know it's so funny when i picked up this second issue of heroes reborn i really did not know what to expect of it and i'm just like oh this is just straight up a day in the life of hyperion wouldn't it be interesting if superman existed in the marvel universe and what would it look like i like that the whole the whole, this whole thing is now predicated on if the avengers didn't exist the marvel universe would be the dc universe <laughs> just that little and again, change and the big difference and i feel like what some people are missing from this is that what aaron is doing here it is not parody he is not no. making fun no, no. of the justice league or dc it is pastiche it is straight up a pastiche and also kind of like an interesting writing exercise, too, where it's like, okay, the Marvel Universe is now the DC Universe. Where will these characters fall and how will things be different and who will fill roles? Yeah, and as you said, the issue is a day in the life of Hyperion after all his villains escape the not Phantom Zone. Mm, the negative zone. And he has to go round them all up. So he's got to round up the Imperial Guard, which we actually get their story in Hyperion and the Imperial Guard this week, which I'll talk about later which is um, a legion of superheroes book you told me basically yeah yeah, yeah. uh he fights mr beyonder who's M- mixel spitlick 
uh he fights uh not metallo hank pym as ultron uh, with and they even they, they call him uh the man with the with the pym particle heart which is love that just, love that the bit. man with a kryptonite heart <laughs> That bit is so... We meet his best buddy, his Jimmy Olsen, who is Peter Parker, who yep. in this world never got bit by a spider, until he actually does. But the spider he gets bit... Again, this is in the Shutterbug. He gets bitten by an Annihilation Wave spider. <laughs> Which gets, is crazy. And and the, there's great... There's a newspaper where he gets turned into it, and he actually falls off a building and breaks all six of his legs. <laughs> Ouch. Man, that, that Parker luck has now become Jimmy Olsen <laughs> luck. And I'm kind of like, you know what? That's Again, that's not really a demotion, because it's like, yeah... Spider-Man never got his powers, but stayed like a good, wholesome dude who just had bad luck. Yeah, he'd be Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, yeah, he's a photographer and everything, yeah. Yeah. It weirdly kind of fits. Same with, uh, what is it, Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. becoming S.H.I.E.L.D. Labs, like Mm -hmm. Horizon Labs, and frickin' uh, Mr. Fantastic basically becoming his Dr. Hamilton. Yep, yep, with uh, with, uh, uh, no powers or anything, um, Dr. Doom is now obviously a Hyperion villain. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, What else? Oh, Hulk Hulk is Bizarro. (laughs) Which is very interesting that all the time in the negative zone basically warped his already fucked up mind, so now he's talking backwards and everything. Yeah, but he remembers a world that wasn't... He knows the world's all fucked up, but no one believes Mm -hmm. him because he's the Hulk he's seen as a villain. Yeah, they also keep the whole he's a mortal thing, so Hyperion (laughs) has to kill him like six times before he stays dead. Yep. (laughs) And the fact, too, that like... Hulk also says, like, look, not only do I remember that this world used to be different, but I remember you used to be different, Mm -hmm. Hyperion. You were never this much of an asshole. What happened to you? And that kind of throws him into, like, an existential crisis where he ends up essentially accepting the lie of this world, Mm -hmm. even though he knows it not to be true, which is actually digging kind of deep into the Hyperion character because, you know, truth is as important to him as a character as, like, you know, truth and justice are to Superman. Yeah, he only cares, like, about it because the world uh, th- that he's in is, like, good, quote-unquote, in his mind. Like, he's sort of in charge in a way and, like, yeah. helps the people and he's the biggest hero in the world, so that's okay in his mind. Everything's yeah. cool. Which, again, is because the government has kind of been fucking with them and Coulson has been fucking with them. And it'll be interesting to see if the Avengers get the squadron on their side because they're, like, essentially victims of all of this, Mm -hmm. too. They don't want to be doing the things they're doing. No, yeah, no, they've all been seemingly made to do this. And the only people that know that is now Hyperion and uh, Nighthawk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they end up going with that. I was really not expecting this whole issue to just be like a day in the life of Hyperion and we only get Blade and Captain America at the very end in what they call a backup story even though it's just a continuation of the story with different art. Yeah, it's it's very very strange they did that, but um yeah, I I kind of didn't like that uh Cap is now just like alive now, like we didn't get to see him being unthawed and like running off. I guess that maybe <laughs> might be the third issue. Maybe. Like we'll go back and check on on that, but yeah, they're now like just <laughs> running around <laughs> Blade was sure to get up a YouTube video to be like, how to de-thaw a man from the ice. Okay, step one, heat some towels. (laughs) Step two, wait. Because, yeah, you figure him coming out of the ice, he probably has a lot of questions. Did we defeat the Nazis? What's going on? You're a vampire hunter? What? Well, well, it's it's implied, it was implied in the dialogue in this that, like, when he woke up, he kind of, like, like beat up Blade and and ran away because like he was you know he woke up to like a vampire guy standing over him of course he's gonna punch his way out of a situation and he keeps his big hobo beard I like too he's like oh I'm a I'm an old veteran that this country forgot and they're keeping him like in shadows like it's Captain America yeah I and um apparently like him being around Hyperion makes Hyperion weak yeah it makes him freak the fuck out i'm like so yeah is he like his kryptonite now or like what yeah is it because they like they're they're filling like hyperion is filling the captain america role in this universe is it like the universe Maybe. is sort of like combating because there's two of them now i guess also too moving forward is this just like how the book is going to be now or are we going to pick like a different hero of the squadron and follow them around i just thought it was so weird i enjoyed it that it's like okay let's see what this world looks like through the eyes of hyperion for a day i wonder is the series going to continue on like this or what 
I can imagine it would. I can imagine we're probably going to get something on Nighthawk because he knows. Yeah. Uh, Hyperion talked about maybe getting him involved in this whole thing. So like, yeah, I could probably see him getting, and it would be more interesting as well with him because he's a congressman. So he's yeah. like on, on the ground floor of all of this sort of stuff. <laughs> Chat saying, "Where's Bucky? Probably still with the Russians." Um, well, they mentioned him in this issue he, with uh, Winter Soldier and his uh, Winter Guard. They oh, they threw him back oh, in Widow the negative guard. zone. Widow Guard. They threw him back in the uh, in the negative zone. That's right, which is actually cool because it's like, yeah, he would have stayed a Russian operator. He would never have been redeemed by Captain America mm-hmm. and, you know, would have been part of the Red Room experiments. Uh, same with Black Widow, who was a villain. So, yeah, they would be the Widow Guard. Yeah. So it's just, you know, evil Bucky with a harem of Black Widows <laughs> in a new anime series coming soon. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they're saying part three is about Blur the Flash, and Yeah, I saw yeah. him on the cover. So yeah, I guess this is going to be the thing now. We're just going to follow a day in the life of these heroes, and that's where they build I'm, the story. I'm fine with that. It's It's different. It's certainly different. Yeah. I know uh, some people, too, were, you know, having an interesting time, you know, with this story. Because it is all kind of about this pastiche and kind of like this, hey, wouldn't it be weird and fucked up if the DC universe existed inside the Marvel universe? So again, I feel like this story is not going to be for like a casual comic reading fan, because unless you are like very familiar with both universes. Oh, oh, I had people that didn't realize that Hyperion existed before this event. So they're like, I know they're, they're ripping off Superman and, you know, what are they doing, you know? Well, take that up with Hickman, <laughs> who, like, what, in, like, 2008? Something like that, yeah. Who's Marvel's Batman? Uh, on the Squadron Supreme, it's Nighthawk. Yeah. So there you go. And also, Nighthawk's Robin is Sam Wilson the Falcon, so wrap mm-hmm. your head around that, too. Yeah. And he also knew Gwen Stacy, apparently, too, because apparently his villains are Spider-Man's villains, and friggin what is it uh green goblin killed gwen stacy but it was him around okay you know what now i see why they got to do these stories (laughs) to follow these heroes around to fill this shit out yeah yeah (laughs) because they've literally created a brand new universe now (laughs) pretty much yeah which if that's the question then what villains did the blur end up uh what is it assimilating to fill the flash roles if because i wouldn't say oh the superman stand in obviously gets the fantastic four villains but yet here we are yeah uh you know what i don't know i can't think of like quicksilver villains maybe, no. maybe he'll just get like evil speedsters or like evil versions of mm. speedsters like speedball or something that would be interesting people I like could that. Also see- Maybe some Iron Man villains, mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm the Melter, but I'm actually Heat Wave. Or like, oh, I'm yep. Blizzard, but I'm actually Captain, Captain Cold. Cold. Yeah, I could see that. Hell, maybe evil. he might not even have it. Maybe it's about him and the, the, the not Speed Force. Maybe, yeah, exactly. Who's uh, who's our Gorilla Grodd standing? There's evil Marvel gorillas. Uh, who was that guy who was on uh, the Secret uh, Avengers for a little bit? He was a big gorilla. Oh, uh, yeah, Mister. Uh, I think it's because Mister Gorilla. He's he's in. The, he's at the uh, Avengers HQ. Yeah, there you go. You yeah, that the Gorilla Grodd standing. Yeah. See now, Jay Aaron's just having a lot of fun now, being like, "Okay, writing exercise. <laughs> Let's just do this." This is, this is his interview for uh, going over to DC in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah really holy shit he wants to look, guys, he really wants it. to write superman look guys i can do it i can do it i got ideas look i can do it <laughs> <laughs> hey they don't have exclusivity contracts anymore so no, no. so there you go yeah gorilla man thank you yeah he's just called gorilla man yeah what a what a generic name <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was Heroes Reborn, and you kind of talked about the two tie-ins. One's kind of a Legion of Superheroes pastiche, and one is the Spider-Man origin in this universe. Yeah, the Hyperion one is the, uh, uh, the Hyperion and the Imperial Guard is the Legion of Superheroes with the young Hyperion, who is more actually like Superman than he is yes. in Heroes Reborn, because he's younger, hasn't been warped or anything. Um, and yeah, the Imperial Guard just get infected by the Brood, and that's how we, we find out that they... They got infected by the brood when they went to uh, Deathbird's uh, keep in the in the negative zone. 
we also get a fun little, again, because the whole uh, conceit of these tie-ins are like, hey, everyone, here's comics that did exist oh, oh, back, yeah. back in the fictional 90s when this took place, yeah, yeah. and we get a Star Jammers book that doesn't exist, yeah. but did exist in this universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, this this Hyperion on the Imperial Guard issue is actually issue 121 of a series. Yes. And it references that comics that came before that don't actually, it's like that Crime Syndicate book that DC is Very. doing, where they reference books that don't actually actually exist i had to tell a couple of people that um, this is the, the the book they give us for a potential star jammer series actually looks really fun it's, so fucking it's like cool <laughs> it's like hey what if the whole summer's family was on the star jammer so you had havoc and cyclops and crosshair but also rocket and groot in there too because in this universe they're more popular than the guardians <laughs> yeah yeah they, they're basically the guardians and uh johnny storm is a nova core member crazy and uh he's he's working with the lalandra and they're they're looking to take try and find the phoenix force to take back the shia empire from her crazy brother <laughs> deken man those designs are like way better than they should be for a fake book <laughs> like it looks really good like why the fuck aren't they making this book that was a good idea <laughs> i love that it was all just a joke <laughs> It it's a, all a, a preview joke. for an issue that comes out in like june 1992 <laughs> 1992 i was not even born yet <laughs> but yeah that that shit's nuts uh what else was there this week oh uh we actually did have a dc book this week batman the detective number two from tom taylor yeah continuation of uh his uh investigation into equilibrium that again like a class any classic batman story ties into his past because doesn't it always also so equilibrium is the organization not the lady running it because i feel like they used equilibrium kind of interchangeably. i just called i just called early equilibrium until we actually get a name and that was one thing i really didn't like about this issue we barely got anything about the this evil organization other than the no. fact that they're tied to henry ducard in some way in some way we we can kind of like uh what is it uh Ex- draw some extrapolate references. yeah yeah because you know batman ends up running into henry ducard again in europe he was one of the guys who trained him and is still kind of a criminal in his own right and he says ah bruce you know you're one of the two greatest people i ever trained i'm like oh is this other bat lady the other one that he's mm-hmm. mentioning because why would you make a weird sentence like that unless it was going to be important yeah i, I was just kind of hoping we get a little bit more like maybe her name or something or like that would have been a nice. reason why she's doing this because other than the fact that these people shouldn't exist like there has to be a reason that like did some did batman not save someone you loved or did batman not save I, you or something well here's my i have a theory on that and let me tell you what you think about this working theory so you know they corner uh ducard they actually do a very cool silhouette gag where you think oh he's talking to batman and he's in shadow oh no wait that's not batman's costume in this series <laughs> It's actually it's actually equilibrium like oh that's fun you know playing with our preconceived notions about silhouettes and uh, you know batman corners them and she's like i oh, will shoot ducard and throw him over the side you know he'll save him because you know batman always fucking saves him and they make a point of you know saying that she's swearing like she's upset and i'm like oh is she mad at all these people that batman has saved not because as you said did he not save someone you love did he you know not save you he did save someone in her life but that person hurt her horribly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's mad in like a they should have died and you know and it's your fault and i blame you and all these other people are like yeah statistically speaking you know all the people you save batman not all of them are going to be good some of them are going to be horrible (laughs) Because people in general are horrible, so like, yeah, you know, you saved my abusive husband or father or something, so that's why they're all pissed off and have formed, like, this little club. (laughs) That's the theory I'm working with. And then you kind of have, what is it, Knight and Squire in there, too, who are kind of, you know, red herrings at the moment. A little bit, yeah. Because, yeah, like, the leader of this group is female. You got two other female characters in here. Because, you know, Knight's not in a huge chunk of it. I'm like, wouldn't that be crazy where it's like, it's actually Beryl Hutchinson's sister or something is the evil well, equilibrium. Well, I had a, like a brief moment because we got a little bit of Squire's backstory about how she was in a we foster did. family and they were cruel and everything. And um, yeah, I just had like a moment where it's like, why would they talk about that in this book when we're talking about like equilibrium and all that? And then I'm like, mm. huh, 
like a, a Mina is dark skinned and so is this villain. It's like, are uh, they gonna? Is there gonna be like a reveal? Like they're the same person or something? Or, or they're related? Yeah, or something. it's like her mother There's, or something. It's you know, it's very. You don't do a detective story like this without every little piece mattering. Yeah, and um, what if it's what if Equilibrium is uh, Amina's mother and she's mad because Batman saved her foster parents who were cruel to her daughter. Maybe, maybe. Again, there's lots of places they could go with it. <laughs> My favorite bit about this actually has nothing to do with the mystery. My favorite moment in this comic is Batman gets offered a lollipop and you think <laughs> he's going to turn it down, but then in the next scene, he's eating the lollipop. Yeah, well, on a speeding train, thinking about stuff. <laughs> he he waited for everyone to be gone, yeah. then he ate the lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, who's going to turn down a lollipop? It's a red one. The red ones are the best ones. <laughs> So that's fun. Yeah. Also, it's funny, you know, it's like we only ever see Henry Ducard in these, like, stories when he's meant to die. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dude can't fucking stay alive to (sighs) save his life. No, no, he's always dying or uh, his death is like an inciting incident. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And they always make a point, too, of being like, oh, no, he died in an alley. So there's, like, you know, Bruce with another surrogate father figure Mm -hmm. who he couldn't save in an alley. Yeah, he even talks about alleys in this one. He does. I'm like, isn't that a bummer? <laughs> but yeah, so that's uh, that's Batman the Detective. It's living up to its name. It's a detective story, and I don't think it'll make sense until it's all over. No, no. They're very, they're very Sherlock Holmesing it right now. It's like, is that important, or is that meant to look important to distract me from the thing that's happening over here? That's important. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, what else did you have this week, Matt? Uh, I had Future State Gotham issue one. Oh yes, the big continuation of Red Hood in a black and white comic. In an in a manga. It's uh, is it literally like cuz I picked it up yeah. and breathed through it. Is it like you got to read right to left? Oh, no, no, but it's it's lit- it, like it's literally a manga. It, like all its big references come from like Akira and like Ghost in the Shell gonna say, and all of that. Cuz he's yeah. a motorcycle cop now. Yeah. Um yeah, it, it's just it's literally a continuation of his story from those future state backups where he's uh working for the magistrate, he's running in the opening, he's running down Scarface, and uh Peacekeeper 3 isn't happy with that because he's meant to stick in his lane and deal with masks, not villains. Mm. That's the peacekeeper's jobs. Um but you know, Red Hood doesn't give a shit because they were in his uh, in his neighborhood, so he's just gonna do it anyway. Mm. Uh, Ravager has left him. She wanted to leave. Mm. She wanted to leave for her father's paradise island or whatever yeah, the hell yeah, he's got. Yeah. But uh, Jason didn't want to, so she left him behind um, to deal with whatever he's dealing with. And uh, the inciting incident is that Batman or someone who meant to make it look like it was Batman attacks the city and uh, burns a giant bat symbol into the narrows. <laughs> like, oh, shit. like actually destroys a huge part of this. It's like that scene in Akira where the nuke goes off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks Which exa- ironically, looks exactly Batman the beyond <laughs> Batman beyond would borrow from when they did their big laser thing and returned the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's got to track down the Batman cause they think it's, uh, the, uh, uh jace fox they think it's uh, his batman who did it and so the news is like running cycles about like how he's, he's evil and everything it just so happens to be what the magistrate want you know it's a you know a little bit too convenient uh so uh jason is deputized as a peacekeeper uh oh. he becomes peacekeeper red how very anime and um yeah he he now has the authority to go after batman and should he come to it to kill batman Mm. and this is all while he's doing uh remember how he was talking with like someone in the shadows and like kind of working uh both sides and against him uh he he ends up meeting that person we find out that that person was nightwing and the resistance the leader of the resistance uh, who still aren't very happy with how he's handled this thing because naturally kind of betrayed the family and that's what i really liked about the issue because it was it was jason stuck in a in a position where no matter what choice he chooses he's going to piss someone off he's gonna How? If, he, if he goes after batman he'll piss off you know the resistance and all those people if he doesn't he'll piss off the magistrate and they'll come after him he's got no choice to do like whatever he chooses someone's going to get angry how uh, how very serpico always know who your friends are jason yeah yeah 
What a what a weirdly bold choice because I didn't know until I picked up. I'm like, this is a fucking black and white comic. Oh my god! I, at first, I thought, oh, this is because like this is a backup story and they just didn't want to pay it a colorist mm. and like all that. It's like this is just cheap. And then I'm like reading, I'm like, oh, this is this actually fits it really well. I would have loved to have been in the pitch meeting for that, where it's like, let's do a black and white comic, because DC in general has been weirdly experimenting with like manga tropes here in the Infinite Frontier era because that robin book had him reading a manga mm-hmm. and then this book is basically a manga and we've got Ghostmaker, who is an anime character basically a yeah, goddamn anime is this like dc trying to dip their toes into a new market where it's like hey all you anime fans maybe if you put down your baratos and your narutos and your one pieces <laughs> and you check out this see look these are these are black and white too we got motorcycle cops and crazy futures you guys like that don't you huh huh the- the, the other thing is in doing it in black and white, there's that added sort of level of like, oh, this isn't like, like nothing is black and white sort of mm. thing. There's shades uh, of gray sort right. of thing. Huh. So again, I, it's probably me reading a bit too much into it, but yeah. I like it though. Yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. Hey kids, you like your My Hero Academias? Well, here's what they're referencing. Actual <laughs> superhero <laughs> comics. <laughs> Would you, would you like to read one of these, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll check it out, but it, to me, I'm just like, whoa, this feels really different. Yeah, oh, I love I love that it was different, and I love that it was different with a character who, uh, for, you know, more or less has been the exact same ever since his creation. True enough. Yeah, <laughs> true enough. At least, you know, if they're going to experiment with anyone, why not Red Hood? Yeah uh what did i have this week uh ooh, i had giant size amazing spider-man king's ransom number one the big finale of nick spencer's current run that was so big it needed a special giant issue to finish it <laughs> jesus <laughs> i know right and it was pretty good but the problem is is that like i almost feel like someone said look man you gotta hurry this up you gotta hurry up a bunch of these storylines you've been meandering on he's like okay fine i'll wrap up like five storylines throughout the course of one story so it's just like big moment big moment big moment big moment back to back and eventually they all start undercutting each other it, it's kind it's kind of why i i stopped reviewing the book just because it, it just felt like he was kind of treading water a little bit there uh like bit. just just after uh the whole kindred stuff the last remain stuff uh, it felt like he was treading water there so i, th- I might just pick up in, in this next arc that starts up maybe maybe that's the best way to play because it. again it's like hey spider-man reconciles with the superhero community i'm like oh yeah there was a thing when this started yeah about... all, all the way back in like issue one <laughs> in issue one then never again that like the other heroes were mad at spider-man because mayor fisk looked like he was giving him preferential treatment <laughs> but they weren't really mad they bust his balls because he comes to them for help to try and get boomerang back before he kills himself and they're like you know spider-man you're a great hero but you're not always a great friend you know maybe <laughs> you should treat us like you treat fred maybe check your fucking email every so often (laughs) and they're like also you're not the easiest guy in the world to trust you're always you know like taken over by a symbiote or doc ock is in your brain or craven is dressed up as you (laughs) you're not always easy and it's like that's fun and then like there's a whole side story about jameson who like started being a better person because he was friends with spider-man but now that he's in competition with Robbie and the Daily Bugle, he's being an asshole again. Mm-hmm. But that blows up in his face when he tries to create pro Spider Slayers to help Spider Man. <laughs> but they're run by commenters on the internet, so of course they blow up almost instantly. <laughs> yeah. And then by far the biggest moment is uh, so they get all the Lifeline tablet pieces together, right? This thing they've been looking for that can bring someone back to life. But to unlock it, you have to, like, pass a, te- pass a test to prove that you're pure of heart. You know, that old shtick. Mm-hmm. And Spider-Man realizes, like, oh, man, you know, I-, I-, I can't do this. And Fred, you can't do it. You've come so far. But, like, if you don't pass the test, you'll die. But I've been having my own weird issues with money. So I need to, like, you know, forsake threats and menaces in my new costume. And by getting rid of it, it's the only way that I can prove I'm true of heart. Which he does and activates it just in enough time for boomerang and the superior foes to jump them from behind (laughs) because guess what this has all been part of a big long multi-part scheme by boomerang to get spider-man to unlock the lifeline tablet so he could steal it for the kingpin oh fuck's sake 
I know. So he was like, he, he says like, you know, it started with me pretending to be your friend because I knew only Sp- Spider Man is the only person I knew who would be enough pure of heart to open it. So you know, I I became you know Peter Parker's roommate and I weaved my way in and it was oh, the most God. complex plan ever. <laughs> But in truth, I really did like you, and I really was your friend. And even though I got my old team back, the superior foes, he misses Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> is the big takeaway from it. And Peter's all pissed off, like, God damn it, I can't believe that Boomerang, one of the worst villains ever, actually got one over on me. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe it. And then they're like, well, should we try and get the tablet back from Fisk? And they're like, no worries, he's just going to bring his fucking wife back with it. I mean, is that the worst evil scheme ever you've heard? <laughs> but wait, Fist changes his mind because of Kindred. Of course. And that is, you know, uh, when Fisk was looking for the tablet to begin with, he found Kindred. And Kindred's like, hey man, you might want to bring your wife back, but as someone who has died and come back to life... Did you ever think that that's what she wants? And if you do bring her back, won't she just end up hating you all over again? Because you suck. (laughs) And he's like, damn, you're right. My wife, she killed our son, you know, to try and benefit me. And that's like this terrible sin and she'll still resent me for it. I know what I'll do. I'll bring my son Richard Fisk the Rose back from the dead, which is what he does. Oh, nice. So the Rose lives again. And I'm like, ooh, this is actually going to be really interesting with the Daredevil book because... After Matt's brother changed history, Fist now has an illegitimate son named Butchie and his real son back from the dead. <laughs> so I think uh, Chip Zdarsky will have something interesting with that. So yeah, uh, giant size Spider-Man lived up to his name. It was giant. In fact, it was almost a little too much. <laughs> it sounds like a little too much. Uh, when did Kingpin's wife uh, kill their son? Uh, old Daredevil from like the 80s. Yeah, ages ago. Yeah, which is why you never hear about his son. You never hear about the Rose or Richard Fisk or Vanessa. I think she killed him and then, like, killed herself later on because she felt bad about it, if I'm remembering that story right. It's it's so. a great moment. It's yeah. a great moment. It's it's classic, classic Daredevil. <laughs> in fact, they even named the title there, like, hey, this happened all the way back in Daredevil, whatever. But we know you know it, right? <laughs> and clearly some fans are like, nah, we weren't alive when this story happened, actually. <laughs> But yeah, so that was Spider-Man. A lot, lot to take in. Yeah, sounds like it. A lot to take in. But now that a bunch of stories are done, maybe the next art can be a little bit more, you know, snappy. Who knows? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take a look at the next issue and see see what it's like and just sort of may, maybe hop back into it. Because, yeah, I just stopped just because, like, okay, this, this is too much going on. <laughs> it's way too, too much. Me. Which is the complete different of Dan Slott's run where it's like nothing is happening here. <laughs> <laughs> It's over. I think the next one is uh, Chameleon Conspiracy. I yeah. think we're going back to that I wanted to, to jump story. in on that because I had been following that one for a while. Yeah, I guess with the sister and everything else. And also, yeah, Chameleon is actually secretly funding threats and menaces. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. that's actually part of his deal, too. Yep. And then you got all the stuff with Teresa, his sister, who we haven't seen in a bit, who is also mad at Chameleon because he killed her partner yep. and also maybe her lover. Yep. So that's a whole thing. Yeah. But, yeah. But uh, it's probably the best boomerang story ever told. <laughs> well, there aren't that many, so. No, if you take this and Superior Foes, it's one big, long, solid story. That's good. So there you go. Uh, what else did you have, Matt? Uh, well, you mentioned Chip Zdarsky, and Chip Zdarsky had a Justice League book this week. That's right. He sure did, which I, I don't know why this one you know completely slipped my mind until it came out. Thank God uh, Sal did an interview with him that reminded <laughs> me. I'm like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's called Justice League Last Ride, and it's basically a, you know, what if we told the last Justice League story ever? Yeah, and that's what it is. It's not a canon story. It's not, like, no. current present day justice league it's a what if i don't know how how people sub it in uh, you could you can as like the last story yeah um and yeah the story picks up with the justice league all broken up uh because of an inciting incident being uh something with martian manhunter being killed and it being we don't know what's fault in some way Um, yeah everyone's kind of blaming each other yeah and uh Super, the story is it's surprisingly again it's surprisingly superman heavy um very because it's about superman he's getting older a little bit older but like the fight still continues it's never ending is you know the never-ending battle mm, and he's, he's starting got a heavy heart and he's starting to feel it 
he yeah, started he's got a real heavy heart he's sad yeah he's sad because like he's fighting his friends as well and like nothing's really going right um but yeah they get a call from to assemble and we learn it's from the green lanterns who have lobo uh lobo who's fresh from killing all of the new gods <laughs> which is one of those things from like hey can lobo do well lobo can do anything he sets his mind to because he's basically <laughs> immortal so sure yeah, why not of course he could do that <laughs> also too hey hal jordan nice uh, nice parallax armor dude it's a parallax armor it's like a alan scott kingdom come armor sort of thing it's great e- you know that's got to be important because everyone else dresses like they always dress except for him. And it's like, hey, man, why why do you look so different? Well, well the, again, it's like kind of borrowing stuff from what's happening in Infinite Frontier at the moment where like the – or in like Future State where like the, the lanterns were like uh, destroyed or like killed mm. out. And uh, his whole deal is that he wants to restart the lantern core and he wants to restart them on the moon because uh, he wants to set uh, Earth up as, like, sort of the center of, uh, I think he says, the center of justice, basically, uh, as as the new OA and show the United Planets that uh, this can work again. And their first mission is to protect Lobo, Assault and Precinct Until 13 style. Yeah. Very. Which, yeah, you know that's going to happen. Like, oh, Lobo has so many enemies who would like to see him dead before yeah. his trial. Oh, that's absolutely going to happen. <laughs> And it's funny, too, you know, uh, Batman hates the idea, naturally, because he's like, no, I'm not playing intergalactic politics. I don't give a fuck about what you lanterns want. And, you know, turning Earth into a no Oa, you know, a new Oa, suck my dick, I'm going back to Gotham. <laughs> Superman, interestingly, is like, no, I actually love this idea because if all these Green Lanterns are marshaled at Earth, that means we probably won't have to worry about crime anymore, which means I can actually maybe take it easy and maybe even retire. Yeah, there, there wouldn't be a need for a Justice League, basically. Uh, which is something just chill. I, which is something a lot of them want and and for good reasons as well it's not nothing bad or anything they just know that their their uh, earth would be protected yeah and that we can't keep doing this forever and you know superman and batman have it out as they always do they really zadarsky really plays up like this dysfunctional family thing like the two drunk uncles yelling at each other <laughs> at christmas and wonder woman trying to keep them apart and flash just being like the little kid being like oh, i don't like it when they fight yeah <laughs> I thought that was a very well done scene. And, you know, Superman has to go to Gotham and has to help Batman out and basically has to beg him, like, you know, why why won't you let this happen? I really, really need this. And I, I like that that uh, Clark actually had also a really human moment where he kind of like, and like he throws the giant coin against the wall in the um mm. in the thing. It's like that's a real human moment because he's frustrated because Batman's just being this dick and just he's like at the end of his rope not doing like just he was he he says so like just put everything in the like put everything behind you just for once and help us mm. stop and being such like, an mm, asshole yeah mm, i don't know don't know if i can because <laughs> yeah you know uh how jordan wanted batman because he's a great strategist and he's mm. already worked out where they can hold uh lobo Lobo, and we find out that that place is uh apocalypse and he says we they have to go back to apocalypse so i have to imagine that's where Mm. martian manhunter died yeah and we'll probably learn more about that in the next issue yeah yeah this uh this was a solid debut you know lots of interesting ideas at play Mm. here again this is also a mystery it's all about unraveling the whys yeah i like uh chip zadarsky writing these characters as well yeah he's got an interesting take yeah even if this is like the older, tireder versions of all of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like some twist you can see coming, like, oh yeah, we're going to get a bunch of villains coming out of the woodwork, assault on Precinct 13 style, like you said. Yep. The fact that Lobo is genuinely, gen- generally shown to be a mercenary and doing this, I'm like, oh, let me guess, some secret villain paid him to do this? Yeah, someone would have paid him, was he at a uh, dark side, Lex Luthor, yeah. someone, you know. Uh, the fact that Hal is taking this so seriously and, like we said, is looking a little parallaxy right now. What if this is, like, some big scam where it's like, oh, you see, I had to do it to bring the League back together and bring the Lanterns to Earth. I had to pay Lobo <laughs> to go kill the new gods. Yeah, to bring the, the, the Lanterns back because he doesn't like going under the, the United Planets and wants, yeah. like, more more power because he, he mentions the, the the Lanterns don't actually have a lot of jurisdiction at the moment. Yeah, they've been greatly, greatly diminished. Yeah. 
And you can tell because Kilowog's wearing a hoodie. Yes. <laughs> I love that image. I don't know why I it's, love it's, that it's image It's the civilian, so much. like, like hide in plain sight. I just, I'm like, you're going through space. I don't think a hoodie's going to help. <laughs> it's not going to help you out. No, if anything, it's going to be a deterrent. Hey, it's one of them Earth hoodies. Get them. <laughs> I, I love it when weird alien creatures wear, like, normal people clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the normaler and more generic, the better. Like, the only way they could have made that even better is if he had a baseball cap <laughs> and a hoodie if he was rocking one of them. <laughs> Where it's like, dude, you're not hiding anything, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> This ain't this ain't the thing with the trench coat and the fedora. <laughs> it doesn't hide you at all. <laughs> yes, Kilowog is best Green Lantern. Big agree. <laughs> he's pretty good. He's pretty. He's pretty freaking good. Oh, hey, and uh, what is it? Uh, we got one of our Green Lanterns there. We got Jess there for a second. Jessica, yeah, yeah. We got Jess. I'm like, good. I'm glad someone remembers this character exists. <laughs> My Diane Guerrero stand-in. <laughs> Hey, she voiced her in the cartoon, which means that'll be her voice forever now. <laughs> but yeah, Justice League Last Ride, pretty solid. I, I feel bad as a writer, though, that I couldn't actually work in an Undertaker Last Ride wrestling move joke in there at all. <laughs> it, it's we, like, yeah, we, have, we have other issues coming up of it, so couple issues you got time. Right. <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, you know, it would be really difficult for The Undertaker to put the entire Justice League over his shoulders, all eight feet of them. He and could then, do you it. Know, he could do it. And then <laughs> and Crucifix powerbomb them to the mat. But, you know, he could have featured. That's, see, The Undertaker actually hired Lobo is the thing. Yeah, The Undertaker comes out, comes for him. There you go. Rest in peace. Do the thing where his eyes roll back in his head. <laughs> What do you mean my wife was wearing DC? Uh, what do you mean my hunting buddy is an actual mercenary war criminal? Uh, oh boy, I got out of this business just in the right time. Uh. <laughs> All right, so uh, what else was there after that? I had, uh, wow, I only had two more after this. Holy crap. Uh, I had, uh, was it Superman issue 31? Okay, I, th- I was going to start this one next. This is a continuation of the, the dark goo monsters on the alien world. Yeah, which is really kind of, like, while it is, like, there and present as, like, the, the main story, it really wasn't. Because the main story is, is, again, Clark writing in his journal and mm. sort of discussing, like, why his son should be the next Superman. And, like, this, and how how John doesn't think he should be because there can only be one Superman and again it feeds into all that really great stuff they did with future state in him where he learns mm. that he doesn't have to be the next superman he can be his own superman yeah uh which is really great um yeah the, the shadow yeah, he will because he's getting a book yep yep the the shadow uh breed stuff was pretty cool as well uh again it's like they're just fighting symbiotes literally yeah. how how weird is it that and maybe you felt this too that it felt like the bigger superman family centric story is happening in action right now and not in the book called Superman. Usually it's the other way around that the big I Superman like life changing stuff is in Superman. I mean, yeah, it's nice for a change. It's like, you know, it can't always be that, you know, action comics is the also ran. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, again, clearly, again, I, again, I think it's because this book is being is is starting to be primed as because it's going to transition over into John. Mm, uh, it's being right. primed as as the John book. That makes a lot of sense, and also probably why the Action Comics book got a new logo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, everyone, this isn't just Superman Jr., this is the real shit. Yeah. This is the real deal now. Yeah, I'll have to check that one out for sure. I mean, I- I'm going to read it, I just you know kept moving it further and further down the thing. I'm like, oh, it's just part two of the Alien Goo Monsters? Okay, because yeah. I thought it was going to be more Mongol stuff, because they did that when the book started, mm-hmm. with like the aliens and the rift, it went between both books. Yeah, well, I think it's it's going to go, um, uh, action is going to be where all the Mongol stuff happens, unless like, I-, I guess like after this arc, which ends, I think next issue, they transition over into... Uh, mongol stuff to set up because i it's very soon uh the book transitions into son of kal-el right which i think in like june or or july or something yeah yeah i think that's gonna be their big summer changeover yeah and the 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 backup was the backup was fucking weird this week uh it's more it's more tales of metropolis stuff and it's uh loose cannon and gangbuster uh (laughs) who are on the same team but immediately viciously fight each other to the death um just because loose cannon doesn't like how gangbuster is dealing with these aliens that the team is after that 
Jimmy we'll Olsen's team is name. after. Um, the Projectress's team. Um, he doesn't like uh, her like beating up these criminals and like why? It's like you literally do the same thing, <laughs> and, and then and then you find out that like uh, Bibbo uh, talked with uh, Projectress again after learning she was Projectress and told her all his plans and all their teams and like okay what the fuck's going like i know bibo is like not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed but he's not a fucking moron like yeah why the fuck would he do that so like projectress is like manipulating the team and everything and yeah i'm like ah that's that's kind of shitty that's not very good storytelling there that does sound weird big yeah agree. I, especially because the last two issues were really good you had that ambush yeah, bug yeah. one and the and the uh and the bibo centric one in the first issue huh it was just so weird it's like they didn't know where they wanted the story to go i guess yeah i mean this is the first time they've been doing like long running backups for a while maybe they're still trying to figure it out yeah well in saying that like the backup in um in action with midnighter and all that is good yeah true yeah uh speaking of a book with a backup uh i had joker this week or the joker again i keep wanting to call it joker but it's the joker i keep forgetting there's a the in it <laughs> it's jim gordon and the joker yeah, <laughs> jim gordon this week especially was it jim gordon and the joker <laughs> was it ever it's more you know jim trying to pound the pavement trying you know figure out where the joker is hiding in belize it's probably the most detective work we've seen in the book yet yeah it's it's jim like legitimately talking about his process of how he solves crimes and especially murders and he says you know there's maybe three distinct different types of murders but the problem is is that the joker is a super criminal who's always changing his mo Mm -hmm. it makes you know finding him so difficult because you know he doesn't kill for any particular reason that is sensible he kills as punctuation to a sentence okay yeah which i very much love that as you know as a reasoning in jim's head Mm -hmm. it says you know he he kills as part of performance crime is what he does and you know what does he do when he's trying to lay low when he doesn't have an audience does he just like sit at the wall and Mm -hmm. just wait Mm -hmm. and i'm like yeah that is a good question yeah every other time we've seen him generally yes And Gordon's like, the good part is, is that if people are hiding him, that means he has to be on because he's a fucking comedian entertainer. So he can't shut it the fuck off while there's people around. That's true. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. And if people are hiding him who are rich, powerful and well connected, I just got to write the uh, ask the right questions (laughs) in Belize. And eventually they'll point me in the right direction, because the thing about rich and powerful people is they don't usually recognize the poor people who mow their lawns or pour their drinks. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, damn, this is really good neo-noir detective work. And uh, he even has a great bit, too, with uh, Cressida, the Court of Owls woman who hired him. Because she gives him, like, the black card, you know, with unlimited funds for this mission. And he's like, what's just stopping me from taking the money and running? Why don't I just, like, take out $25 million and run? Yeah. (laughs) And she says, well, we wouldn't have asked you to do it if we thought you would. You're the most honorable guy in Gotham. (laughs) Maybe the most honorable cop in fiction. So we know you're good. I'd love if that's the moment where, like, Jim Gordon is like, like, enough of this shit. It just, like, goes to an ATM and takes out the money and just fucking fucks off somewhere. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, yeah, fuck you. It's like, oh, jeez, what do we do now? (laughs) She even goes a little further, actually, and they add some great characterization to her where she's like, no, actually, I hope you do spend some money and treat yourself i hope you get a nice suit and a hotel with a view and an expensive bottle of booze after everything this city has taken from you (laughs) and we had a flashback to killing joke in the beginning you deserve it that'll be yeah cool (laughs) and i'm like huh wow that's interesting they even kind of reframe killing joke too where it's like you know gordon's the real hero of killing joke right because if he did break then joker would have been right and batman would have been wrong that's true. The fact that he, the fact that he overcame Joker and proved that no, nah, you know, you know, good people are good, and it takes more than one bad day to break a person. Yeah, Gordon is actually the real hero of that story. Yeah. Well, not only, not only that as well. It's like even like uh, what Joker did to his like son and everything didn't yeah. break him either. So like, yeah, I, again, it's like that'd be actually really cool if they reframe. It. It's like, oh, Batman isn't Joker's greatest uh, nemesis. It's is Gordon because Gordon kinda... never fucking breaks. It kind of feels like they're going that way, actually, That'd be so with it. Cool. It is, yeah, because yeah, they're like we, we've had just as much shared history, but Batman had his one bad day when his parents got killed, and that made him crazy and dress up like a bat. I have had nothing but tragedy: dead wives, dead children, you know, crippled children, and yet I'm still ticking. I'm still here. I'm still hanging in there, Jim Gordon. Yeah. 
And of course, again, to bring back the assault on Precinct 13 thing, Gordon finds Joker in just enough time for like Lady Bane and the Texas Chainsaw Cannibals to all show up. <laughs> and so like Joker throws him a gun. And it's like, oh, hey, I have an audience. Looks like we're going to have to team up, Jim. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Which, again, classic cop movie. Oh, comedically yeah. mismatched partners. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. i got to catch up. I've read the second issue. I haven't read the newest one, though. Continues to be really solid. What a what a great Jim Gordon series. It's the best way you do a Joker book. Don't make it about I, him. I, I love that they, they, they fucking got us with the, like, oh, it's, it's a Joker it's a Joker book. Everyone's going to buy it now. And then they're just like, psych, it's a Jim Gordon story. <laughs> But it's excellent, so you're going to keep yeah, reading. But, uh, yeah, and people just like, it's like, fine, it's good. <laughs> you got me, you, you got me. The, the little cheese in the trap, and it fell yeah. down. It's like, but you know Because I can imagine right if here. they if everything was exactly the same as it is, but they just called the book Jim Gordon. Wouldn't uh, sell half would, as good. Yeah, it wouldn't sell at all. Wouldn't sell. I, I have to wonder, too, once this Gordon story is done, because I, I don't think they said this is a mini. Like, I think they said this is an ongoing story. I don't know how it can be, though. Cause it, cause like the premise of the book is that this is his last case. Yeah. Like before he retires. So I would have thought it would have been a mini. You, you know what it is? You change perspective. The next arc is actually all about Harley or doctors in Arkham or something like that. Someone yeah. else who the Joker has touched. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You know what it is? Uh, the, uh, what is it? Oracle and the bat girls actually feature quite prominently into this. So fuck. What if the next arc is just about that? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Like, Hey, we actually got people to buy a fucking Batgirl book, too, for more than a little bit. <laughs> by calling it Joker. <laughs> That's fine. You can use that trick if you get people to buy good books. Maybe they'll just start doing that from now on. It's like, oh, it's the new Joker series, but it's it's a Superman book. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Crazy. <laughs> Wait, How the Justice that? League book is now just called Joker? <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, it's a Secret Six book now? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> How about that? Oh, the new Summer of Crisis event is just called Joker? <laughs> the book? Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> we gotcha, we gotcha. <laughs> gotcha, and we're not letting go. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I, I had one last book, what about you? I had one last book as well. Was it X-Corp? Because for me it was X-Corp. It was X-Corp. It was X Corp. How, how about this X Corp, Matt? A lot of people. I just uploaded my video before we started. A lot of people are not liking it. A lot of people are yeah. saying it's boring. And and I like it for that reason. It's all the background stuff that you never see in comics. That's mm. always brief, briefly brushed over in in passing. And that's all like front runner stuff. It's all like we've got deals and meetings to mm. go to, and the, the stock is shorting, and yep. all that sort of stuff. It's all great. It, it is a corporate thriller. It is a John Grisham novel. Mm -hmm. It is Pelican Brief, but with mutants in it. Yeah. Does that sound like something you like? Then you're going to fucking love this. Do you hate the sound of that? Did you not finish Pelican Brief? Then you're not going to like this book. <laughs> It's funny, I, I was very much reminded of uh, Peter David's last X-Factor series, which ironically was all about servile and was also an X-Men, but via corporate America thing. That book was actually more action-packed than this. This one, again, very much tries to be the unique niche flavor that it is. And yeah, it's all about business and backstabbing and smoky boardrooms and everything. Yeah, and the the... the the whole thing in this first issue is they, they're sort of setting up X Corp still like getting new board members mm. uh, involved in everything. So we get people like uh, Trinary uh, from X-Men yeah. Red as the, the technopath and uh, multiple man. And, and we've got uh penance and uh, Archangel. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty solid team up of like lots of cult mutants where it's like, people are going to buy this book just so they can read about Warren or just so they can read about Jamie Madrox. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. This is also teeny Howard. Who's writing this, who was also writing uh, Excalibur. Yeah. Or is still writing. Excalibur. Yes. Yeah. And she's, still going. she's like one of the top creators of this whole X-Men thing. It's like Very. her and uh, like Jonathan Hickman. Absolutely. Uh, I, apparently we're losing X-Factor. X-Factor is actually like the first book that's going to be getting the ax soon, which is a shame because oh, really? I loved yeah, I liked the kind. I had stopped reading it because I had too much to read, but I loved the kind of like mutant CSI thing. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. 
But clearly they're not running out of ideas. They're like, hey, man, it's fine. We can lose one and got another. You know, mutants and mysteries didn't work. Well, mutants and boardrooms. We'll see I, if that one again, works. Again, is it, is it more of the fact that they're just like they don't want too many books, so they're just like shuttering some books uh, to make room for these other books? I'm I'm sure it's a kumite type system. I'm sure it's like, look, <laughs> you go the right, until the writers you... have to fight each other in a, in in a fucking death death cage match. It's, <laughs> it's literally the crucible of X Men writers. Like, pitch an idea. You could have anything you want, but then when it stops selling under this amount, we axe it and we give someone else a turn. <laughs> Which again, I think some books actually ended up like going above and beyond their expectations like i don't think they believed in marauders in the beginning but now no. marauders surprised everyone and dugan is going to be right in main x-men it's, yeah it's like one of their like biggest po- i i like fell off it pretty quickly just because again too much fucking x-men stuff but uh from what like you've told me and what i've seen it's been like really selling well it is it's very solid the hellfire gala is spinning out of it so mm-hmm. like that yeah. should tell you of like how big and important like again i think in the beginning they thought excalibur was going to be bigger because mm-hmm. excalibur was like the backbone of x of swords yeah yeah like they could have spun it out of any book but they spun it out of that one mm-hmm. and uh yeah uh so yeah uh, 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 yeah X Corp, not going to be for everyone. It is what it is. I don't think I'll be adding it to my own personal pile, mainly because I'm already thinking of adding Way of X to the pile. Because <laughs> Way of X is very cool with its theological take on Krakoa and X Men and Legion and Nightcrawler is in it, so that's all cool. It's pretty cool, but yeah, no, I really, I, I kind of knew it was going to go this way. It'd be, uh, be more, uh, like corporate x-men which is what what i ex- exactly what i wanted because in those early teasers from jonathan hickman when they were setting it all up i just i loved mm. all that sort of stuff and i loved it all here and again i think we're going to get more of that uh uh like sinister nature that these x-men books have got because yeah. i got a little bit here because i feel like i know charles xavier is not meant to be involved in this company but he seems to be like like backdoor running it <laughs> He's, he's pulling a lot of the strings. He even has, like, secret meetings with Monet and yeah, Warren yeah. when he probably shouldn't. Yeah. And he's like, hey, guys, I'm really interested in what you're doing. It's the way he says it, too. Where it's like, ah, oh, yes, you know, we built X Corp by giving all this amazing medicine to the world for free. And now we're going to make those motherfuckers pay through the nose for everything else yeah. who hated and feared us. <laughs> not, not only that, 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 like, Penance's, like, tagline for that ad they do at the start where it's like, we're superior or something. Mm. And even Warren's like, uh, should we do that? Is we you yeah. run that past the <laughs> testing department? And she's like, nah, it's fine. It's great. People are going to love it. <laughs> Warren is a, is a very interesting protagonist in this book because he is trying to remain a good man while being a good businessman, which is damn near impossible. Yeah, yeah. I have to imagine we're going to see some uh, corruption happen with him, I think. They uh they also do that Glen Gary, Glen Ross thing where they're like, you know, friggin' X Corp is for closers. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, that's what we need. We just need, like, shouty freaking Alec Baldwin there telling everyone. It's like, oh, what, you could walk through walls? Bullshit. I don't give a fuck. Go home. <laughs> that's that's what the book needs more of is what I'm saying. <laughs> but, yeah, it's pretty cool. If anything we said sounds interesting to you, you'll probably dig it. If the idea of a smoky boardroom, Mad Men, but with X-Men doesn't appeal to you, then it probably never will. Because honestly, this looks to be the sort of book where they're not even going to be fighting supervillains. This looks like they're fighting other evil CEOs. Well, and yeah, shit. yeah. Well, their battles will be in the boardroom and uh, undercutting other businessmen and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I imagine that, that I, can, I can imagine there probably will be some because I, I the thing I'd really love is if they're like, OK, so we've got the whole boardroom stuff set up. So let's uh, so Monet hires like 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 a fixer or something. And it's someone mm. they send that send in to like, I know, break someone's kneecaps or something when they don't yeah. like buy enough stock or something. Hey, Maverick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Someone like that. <laughs> maverick or like oh hey we got saber tooth out of the thing but only for these missions it's a work yeah. release program yeah and and he looks exactly like Liev schreiber so we can have basically ray oh. donovan walking around like breaking people's kneecaps <laughs> oh man man you you are writing my dreams man oh no <laughs> yeah they should call it mad x yeah you're right <laughs> it basically fucking is oh my god everything about that does it for me 
well, Matt, we're not going to do better than that. I think we better start wrapping the show up now. <laughs> <laughs> Any, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want to uh, pitch or promote? Uh, not really. Nothing happening at the moment. Yeah. Big <laughs> not I, not, not with look- YouTube the way it is at the moment. I do have stuff <laughs> I want to do, but I can't do it at the moment. <laughs> uh, fucking, fucking for real, I tell you. Uh, go check out, uh, what is it, Caves and Crooks, everyone. It was a lot of fun getting to work with, you know, Professor Thorgy and Kurt and Scott from nerds think it's probably one of the biggest collaborations i've done with other youtubers in a while it cracked a thousand which is pretty good considering youtube is fucking over longer content on my channel (laughs) and because it's like two hours so i'm really glad people watched it thank you for that and if you're on reddit check that out too i think i post it to like our actual play podcast and like our something other for like D and D podcasts and everything. And, you know, people seem to be enjoying it there. Cause I would like to keep doing that. We're, we're definitely going to stream that one. And then I'll figure out what we're doing with that later. Nice. We'll, we'll figure out what's happening with that too. Also too, because I paid a lot of money for beautiful artwork on that too. <laughs> and I'd really like to make some of that back at some point. <laughs> Fuck. Seriously, uh, Tenchi Art, who did that, uh, did an amazing job and went above and beyond. It was worth every penny I paid for that one. So be sure to check that one out, everyone. Again, remember, if you're a patron, you will get the show first before anyone else. For a dollar a month, you get the audio version. For $5 a month, you get the video version. We always try and get that to you as soon as possible. And that will never go away. No matter what ends up doing with the show, we will do it for you. Even if we're just making it for patrons, we'll be doing that. If you're not subscribed to our SoundCloud or iTunes feeds, you should do that now because a lot of the show is coming out in audio form. Every other version of it will be. Mm-hmm. And Lord willing, we won't have to do that for too long. No, I don't. I don't. I have a feeling this whole YouTube thing is just gonna sort itself out. They they usually like they'll change something else and focus on something yeah. else in the next so couple of months. Them. Hey everyone! Uh, everyone, write to friggin' I don't know, like uh, I don't even know who big YouTubers are anymore. Write write to them and tell them to complain. <laughs> give a uh, give fucking PewDiePie a reason to uh, complain. There you go. Yeah. No, maybe not him. He might say something racist. <laughs> and then we'll all get in trouble again. <laughs> They'll think everyone, of, everyone's like that. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, one of the Pauls, when one of the Pauls is done fighting Mayweather. <laughs> no, I can't tell which Paul apart, and I don't care to tell them apart. Yeah, they're both the same. They just interchange each, with each other every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a parent trap situation. It's a it's it's a prince and the pauper style situation. <laughs> there's there's actually just one Paul. Have you ever seen them in the same room together? No. <laughs> Clearly, that's just one guy moving back and forth very quickly to trick your eyes. <laughs> that's his mutant power. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm fucking falling to pieces here. We better end this show. (laughs) Thank you, everyone, for coming out and supporting and everything. We really appreciate it. Matt and I will be back live next week, same time, same place, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. (laughs) Hopefully. So until then, everyone, bye-bye. Bye.